got grown up things to be doing besides cheating. <laughs> I don't understand. Hey, what is up society? It is your favorite one to be influencer and sovereign Koi and welcome back to my channel, baby. And you already know, we are back with another Reddit story video. Y'all got some crazy titles here. Y'all know I don't read these stories before y'all read them. So baby, when y'all finding out, I'm finding out. So I got some crazy titles here and I'm super excited to get into it. So if you guys wanna see me read some Reddit stories, then keep on watching, baby. Let's just get right into the video. Going up. Let's just get right into this first story. Am I the asshole for not providing my husband the paperwork needed to enroll our child in school? Why he don't, why he don't got the paperwork? Okay. Hello everyone. I, 27 female, and my husband, 33 male, got into a big yelling match tonight over our daughter, 11 female, school registration info that was due today. My husband is blaming me for not providing two out of the three documents that were required for her to be fully enrolled in the school she'll be attending for middle school in August. For context, our daughter is technically my stepdaughter. My husband and I have been together for almost nine years, married for seven, and I've been in my stepdaughter's life since she was two and a half. Her mother, 32 female, and my husband have 50-50 custody, and they share decision-making responsibilities for her. When my stepdaughter was four, a few months after my husband and I got married, she'd been calling me mommy. Oh, okay, period. My husband and I made sure to tell her that she doesn't have to call me that if she's not comfortable, since no one will ever replace her mom. But she insisted and still insists to this day that she prefers to call me mom as well. Okay, period, she can, you can, she can have more than one mother, okay? I've always treated her like my own child, but there are some things I legally can't do since I'm not her legal guardian. For instance, I can't sign any official forms or enroll her in insurance because I'm not her legal guardian. Five years ago, my husband and I had another child, my only biological kid. So we also have our five-year-old son. He will be starting kindergarten in August, and I've already completed all the enrollment info needed for his transition since I am one of his legal guardians. Right. Back to the problem. For weeks, my husband and our daughter's mom have been getting emails letting us know that her school enrollment forms for her middle school were due today. I see where this is going. Why aren't y'all taking responsibility for this? You know what? Okay. I have been updating my husband in increments of time to remind him to submit those forms since he and his ex are the legal guardians of our daughter. Right. So it's not like he don't know. They both know. Okay. Well, two days ago, he asked me to find a specific form needed and her birth certificate around our house. I told him I didn't have the form he was asking for and that her birth certificate was probably either in our safe or on our dressers. The night we get home from dinner and he begins asking for those two required documents again. I found a similar document to the one needed that I didn't think was sufficient enough. But only after pulling teeth with him to let me find it on his desktop computer for filling it out for our son's school info. And I found her birth certificate on his dresser. Like you said it was at. After he looks over the document that I told him wasn't going to be good enough, he then starts giving me a horrible attitude about it not being sufficient. I pointed out that I told him when he asked for it two days ago that it wouldn't be good enough. And he insisted that I should have found him an alternative form for him to use. Why can't you find it? Your ears, your eyes, your fingers don't work? Okay. He claimed that my unwillingness to come up with something within the last two days was proof that I won't help him and he doesn't need to be with me if I'm not going to help him when he asks? <laughs> oh, excuse me? Excuse Are you a child? Are you throwing a tantrum? You couldn't find a form? You've almost been with me for a decade. You couldn't find a form and now all of a sudden you don't need to be with me if I can't help you? Find a form for your child. Girl, get to signing. The third form that was needed is still not available because our daughter's mom did not acquire it over the last few weeks like my husband has been asking her to. Why can't he do it? Why are you pushing this off on the women? Why can't you do it? This is your child as well, sir. Am I missing something? So now he is saying she would need to be unenrolled and won't be able to attend the school that she had her heart set on because I wouldn't help him and her mother didn't get the forms that she was supposed to get. In my perspective, I've been reminding him for weeks to get this taken care of, period. That's pretty helpful. Girl, you, you just gonna skip over the fact that he said he don't need you? Okay. 
Okay. When he asked him the two things he needed two days ago, I told him I didn't have anything that would suffice for one of them and told him the probable location of the birth certificate, which is clearly communicated and pretty helpful. I am at a loss of how I'm in the blame for the lack of documents being provided. At the end of the day, I am not the adult between our daughter's three parents that is responsible for acquiring and submitting these forms to make sure she is in school. And the incompetence formed by both my husband and his ex are to blame here. If I am in wrong, please explain to me like I am stupid because I am the type of person that wants to learn from my mistakes but I can't see how it's my fault in the slightest. I mean, no, 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 no. The answer is no. You are not the asshole. This is kind of strange to me because I'm just not, I'm not getting it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm missing something here. Like, sir, did you forget that this is not my child? Hello? Like, I'm just not, I'm not sure here. And she did put a little edit y'all too, saying that she lives in a state where basically she has like no like guardianship, like anything over the child because both of her parents are still alive. Like, so she can't do anything, even if, though she's married to him, she can't do anything for the girl. Um, I don't know what state that is. That's kind of crazy, but whatever. Girl, this is like <laughs> weaponized incompetence because how is it that her birth certificate is on your dresser, sir, but you couldn't find it? It's giving, you got to go with pictures and a poster board to the grocery store to pick up some lotion that we always use every day all the time. Like, sir, you live in a state where she has no rights to your daughter. You and your ex-wife are responsible for that little girl. Don't get me wrong. She's a stepmom, so she's going to be in the little girl's life and making sure that she's safe in X, Y, Z. But you and your ex-wife are responsible for that girl being enrolled in school. You knew that. She told you that weeks ago. The school sent y'all emails weeks ago. Like, like I don't. Let me not be petty because I'm like, baby, I'm just, divorce. Because not you saying you don't need me or you don't want to be with me just because I I can't give you the documentation that you're looking for, sir. I'm not his mother or her mother. We only have one kid together. We're getting who you know today. Like, come on. Like, what, girl, girl, you. <laughs> He would have heard from me because I ain't got time. Forget weeks. He's probably known for months. He's probably known since the end of the school year of the last year or whatever the heck when he wanted to enroll her the first same time. So what? She's 11. So she's been in school before. So she probably is going to a similar school or the same school in that area. And it's probably the same or similar protocols as any other damn school in the area. So you've probably been knowing for months how to enroll that baby. And if she's 11 years old, you haven't enrolled, enrolled her before? You had to because, um, hello, you got to get me re-enrolled re every year. Girl, child, not the asshole, but um, you might want to go ahead and get the divorce papers prepared, put them on the side, because there's a reason why he got an ex-wife. Both of them motherfuckers incompetent, don't know what the hell they're doing anyway, but whatever. Moving on. Am I the asshole for telling my husband's a fair baby's family to either come get the kid or I'm calling CPS? Hey. Okay. My, 53 female, soon-to-be ex-husband, Roger, 47 male, whom I forgave for his affair, came home with the baby four months ago. His girlfriend, 22 female, could not handle it anymore and brought the baby to him at work and left. To the best of his knowledge, she is in Spain. I'm so... <laughs> don't get me wrong, okay? Good for you for giving the baby up because you don't want to be a mother and we wouldn't want anything to happen to this innocent baby, but... Girl, how you go... You know, I'm not going to blame her. I'm not going to blame her because maybe she didn't know about you or something. But I doubt that she didn't know about you. But anyways, let's just say that she didn't. She dropped this baby off to this man. <laughs> and she is Spain living her best life. Friend. Now, come on. You said girlfriend. So, I mean, I ain't going to assume that she knew. I ain't going to assume. Continuing. I allowed him to stay so long as I didn't have to do anything. Anything. Okay. Well, about a month ago, Roger had a heart attack. Dang. It didn't kill him, but he's very weak and is incapable of doing anything for himself. Ooh, dang. Since he isn't up and about, he cannot care for the child. He also cannot drop off and pick up the kid from daycare. I've been helping, but I'm done. My kids are full grown. I shouldn't be having grandchildren anytime soon. I don't have any desire to care for a baby. Hey, girl, how old is you? 53? Girl, yeah, pack it up. I told Roger that I want a divorce, and I contacted the mother's parents. I know the father through friends. See, I take it back. She knew. She knew. Because how you know this girl's daddies, daddy and mamas, whatever the hell? How you know How you know them? But she didn't know about your husband. Girl, how you gonna fuck on this woman's man and then get pregnant and then ditch the baby on them? Like, okay. 
I said that they had until Friday to come get the grandchild. I'm calling CPS. Period. They just left with the baby. But they scolded me for being cold towards a baby that had done me no harm. I view that child differently. Well, of course you do. Hey, she didn't, she, hey, she ain't hurting this kid. She's not responsible for this child. No, ma'am, y'all look at that. Uh, hey. Continuing. Roger is recovering and I will be moving out. The house is in his name, but I have never contributed to it. I have the equivalent of 22 years of rent and interest put away. Period. Look at you, girl. Get it together. Come on. And per our prenup, my savings are my own. And I work and I don't need anything out of this marriage except myself. Good. Good for you. The kids tried telling me to stay and help their father. I said that they were welcome to come over and help him with cleaning himself and the baby. Both declined, which I felt was a fair offer. Period. Hey, <laughs> don't put it on me. He didn't betray y'all. He betrayed me. So, no. And then y'all want me to, to take care of a baby? You're telling me to stay, but you don't want to assume the responsibility of taking care of him and this baby that he decided to go and have. Continuing. I do not feel that I'm acting badly. However, Roger, our children, his child's family, and a few mutual friends think that I am. Perhaps writing this out and seeing the responses will give me clarity. Girl, no. 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 You cared for the child while he was down, down and out, but he th that baby has a family. You have no responsibility to that child, and it can't nobody put that on you. I don't give a damn if it is a baby. You're not mistreating the child. You're not doing nothing bad to the kid. You're literally, hey, I do not want to be associated with this kid. And you're divorcing the man, too. I was going to say, if you're staying in the marriage, I mean, at some point, you're going to have to accept the child being around, and you're probably going to have to do something for the kid along, like down the road just because you're still with his father, you know what I'm saying? But because you're getting a divorce and you're moving out, you know what I'm saying? You know, because just life, just life. But at the end of the day, though, these first couple of months, even if you want to do the first couple of years, no, nothing, you're not doing anything anything for that kid, that's understandable. Because what? Like, like no. And then the kids, uh, 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 you should stay and take care of our cheating father and his and his bastard son. Uh, no. And then you offered it to them, and all of a sudden, uh, crickets. Uh, what happened? What happened to all that energy? Bring it back. Come on. Spin the block. Like, no, like, OP, I am so sorry for you, girly. I am so sorry for you. Like, you know, to me, I just feel like, and maybe it, this could just be a personal opinion. I don't care. But ain't you too old to be doing that? Sir, you about to be in your 50s. She's in her 50s. You had when you were in your 20s to be to be fucking around, making new babies and stuff. You, Maybe it's time to pack it up. Because what? I always find that so strange. Like, how do you have time for that? Don't you got a 401k be preparing for? Don't you got retirement to be saving up for? Don't you got life insurance you should be worried about going up? Don't you should got a doctor's appointment you need to go to to go see them eyes to make sure that you're not losing your eyesight on the road? Don't you got grown-up things to be doing besides cheating? Like, I don't understand. It just gets so childish to me. Like, what are you doing? Are you having a midlife crisis? Why are you sleeping with a 22-year-old, sir, when you're 47? Huh? The congregation would like to know. Child, no, OP, you did the right thing. And them people, how dare y'all? Like, that shit is just making me so mad. How dare you be mad at her because she wants nothing to do with the product of her husband's betrayal? Like, treating a child so cold that did nothing to you. Um, The baby was born. Even though it didn't do anything to me, like, specifically, that baby didn't do anything to me. Them being born is a constant reminder of that hurt. But I'm glad that you're getting out, OP. That's good that you're getting out. That's good that you're divorcing him and leaving. Because no, know your fucking words. Because what in the world? Man, whatever. Moving on. Am I the asshole for being married and talking to another guy, Brawless? Hey, free the titties, what? I, 22 female, have been married for two years and I went to a Memorial Day barbecue last weekend. My husband had work, so wasn't able to come. I'm a pretty conservative Christian. I try to be normal though, and I'm not mean about it. Okay, I about to say we got a Bible thumper on our hands. Okay. I couldn't decide what to wear. So my husband suggested I wear this dress that I absolutely love. Objectively, it's not anything crazy. It's a white sundress. T-Ling, loose in skirt, form fitting up top, but I'm small chested. So there's not really any cleavage or anything, even if it doesn't have a very high neckline. Anyways, I get to the barbecue and there are probably about 15 people there. All people I know, but not all of them are close friends. It was a super fun day, and towards the evening, we were all sitting outside. This really sweet guy, I've seen a couple of times before, started talking to me. He was asking about my couple's Bible study with my husband and I. 
He said he and his girlfriend were interested, so I was having fun talking to him. Not even remotely flirtatious. Period. Hey, go ahead and talk about y'all guys and stuff. Come on. All of a sudden, one of my best friends storms up to me and tells me, what a dirty slut I am for talking to another guy while my tits are on display. I look down and I see that, yes, my nipples are poking through my dress pretty hard. So, if it's y'all are outside, it's probably Wendy. Conservative Christians. Conservative Christians. Okay. Okay. I covered my chest and hurried inside. Really self-conscious, not knowing if I've been exposed all day or just since it's been getting colder. I mean, the body's gonna body, honey. If it's getting cold, the body's gonna get gonna body. Even if you're not cold. <sighs> okay. I wanted to talk to one of my other good friends. I told her what had happened outside and I was expecting reassurance. But she told me that this trad wife nonsense needs to stop. What the heck is a trad wife? I had to look up what a trad wife was because I'm not really on social media. And that is this barefoot, braless, pantyless bullshit needed to stop. What? Okay. Okay. I was shocked and left crying. The first friend calling me a few days ago saying that she was willing to accept an apology on my part. I haven't responded to her because I don't think I have anything to apologize for. Girl, what do you need an apology for? What am I apologizing for? Continuing. So please help me out. Am I the asshole for talking to this guy? Am I the asshole for wearing that dress? Am I the asshole for not responding to my friend's call? Girl, are you the asshole for anything? Also, after talking to my mom and husband, I'm strongly considering trying to push my comfort zone and intentionally making it obvious that I'm braless as an act of defiance, period, and embracing my femininity. Would that make me the asshole? No, friend. No, friend. Free the titties. Free him, honey. Free him, free him, free him, free him, free him. Okay. Girl, what? Are we expecting an apology? Girl, are you delusional? <laughs> are you delusional? Hello? Like, what, what What? do you mean you'll be expecting an apology? Girl, free him. You said that you already, you know, you part of the itty bitty titty community anyway. So, what, what, girl, she probably ain't got much to show anything. Probably just a little chocolate chips. Like, what? what? Girl. Girl, she can kiss both of our asses, okay? No freaking ma'am. If your husband likes it, that's all that matters, okay? And that's another reason why, like, religions be giving cults sometimes, y'all. Like, they really be giving cults. And I'm so sorry. Like, don't get me wrong. I grew up in a Christian family, okay? Not conservative Christian, but I grew up in a Christian family, okay? Non-denominational family. So it's just like, I understand that, you know, some of the, especially the elders, we want to use to be like, you know, modest and X, Y, Z. And of course, you shouldn't have the meetings out in church. Come on now, time and place. But at the end of the day, Girl, you got a barbecue. Chatting it up with somebody about Bible study. So what? So baby girl, we need to get out of this, out of this, this scope of believing that God is like afraid of nakedness. God is not. I'm sorry. It's not. Baby, we are born naked. God is everywhere all the time, all the always, baby. God sees you in your worst and at your best, honey. God sees your titties, your middies, your everything out. Everything. Okay. And this reason why I'm not talking about religion now, because this religious stuff, like all this, like, girl, no. No. You're not the asshole. Good for you for embracing your femininity. Good for your husband for telling you, baby, go on out there and be the baddest that you know that you can be. Okay? We love a supportive husband. Like, girl, what? Like, I'm still stuck on the apology. Like, I would have got on the damn phone. I would have got on the phone and said, you know what? I am sorry that you are a delusional cunt. So sorry for your friend. Girl, no. Good for you. Moving on. All right, society, that is it for this freaking video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and share. And if you're new, hi, please subscribe to the beautiful society because me, your sovereign, would love for you to join all this craziness. And for all my lovely society members, please make sure to hit that bell notification so you're notified every single time I post, baby. All right, guys, I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.